Hey everybody, it's Zach. So sorry for the long hiatus with YouTube. We have been upgrading in new film equipment. Here is the new camera. The lighting is still at the old lighting, but we have ordered new lighting. So we have a lot of revamp going on into our studio. It's all in our effort to bring you higher quality training for you as a real estate agent. So today we are diving into what does it mean or what are the steps as a listing agent in order to sell a home? So I saw, I don't know if it's a viral post, but a lot of agents on Facebook, at least locally, have been resharing the same Facebook post as far as why agents get paid the amount of money that they do, trying to justify their services with the NAR lawsuits. A lot of agents are on edge. A lot of home buyers or home consumers are kind of confused with some of the different law, NAR lawsuits. That's a different video. I made a previous version of those NAR lawsuits. I'm gonna have an update video later on but subscribe to this channel so that way you can follow along with all my different viewpoints on that. But today's video is all about what do you do as a listing agent from A to Z and how you can help better justify your value as a real estate agent when you list a home because it's a lot more than just putting a sign in the yard, listing it on the MLS and calling it a day. I call those passive agents. So you can do that. It might not attract the most amount of consumers. There's a better way to do it. There's an active approach. So I'm gonna read through this Facebook post. I thought it was really good content. I'm not taking credit for these 90 steps. These are completely somebody else's ideas, but the post never gives credit and so many agents have shared it. I don't know who it belongs to originally, so I'm sorry if I'm not giving you credit, but after I run through these 90 steps, I'm not gonna give initial input. I'm gonna share these as a value add as far as what you can put together for a marketing plan or help you understand your value as a real estate agent. But at the end of this video, after I run through the 90 really quick, I'm gonna share my different tips and tricks that helped me secure a lot of different listings. So let's jump in. What are these 90 different steps to being a real estate agent? What do I have to do if I get a listing? What are the different steps? So I'm gonna run through these 90 really quick without any context and I'm gonna give my opinion afterwards. Number one, prepare listing presentation for sellers. Two, research sellers property tax information. Three, research comparable sold properties for sellers. Determine average days on the market. Gather info from sellers about their home. Meet with sellers at their home. Get to know their home. Present listing presentation, advise on repairs and or upgrades, provide home seller to-do checklist, explain current market conditions, discuss the seller's goals, share your value proposition, explain benefits of your brokerage, present your marketing options, explain video marketing strategies, demonstrate 3D tour marketing, explain buyer and seller agency relationships, describe the buyer pre-screening process, create internal file for transaction, get listing agreement and disclosure signed, provide seller's disclosure form to sellers, verify interior room sizes, obtain current mortgage loan info, confirm lot size from county tax records, investigate any unrecorded property easements, establish showing instructions for buyers, agree on showing times with sellers, discuss different types of buyer financing, explain appraisal process and pitfalls, verify homeowners association fees, obtain a copy of HOA bylaws, gather transferable warranties, determine need for lead-based paint disclosure, verify security system ownership, discuss video recording devices and showings, determine property inclusions and exclusions, agree on repairs to made before listing, schedule staging consultations, schedule home cleaners, install electronic lockbox and yard sign, set up photo video shoot, meet photographer at the property, prepare home for photographer, schedule drone and 3D tour shoot, get seller's approval of all marketing materials, input property listing into the MLS, create virtual tour page, verify listing data on third party websites, have listing proofread, create property flyer, have extra keys made for lockbox, set up showing services, help owners coordinate showings, gather feedback after each showing, keep track of showing activity, update MLS listing as needed, schedule weekly, weekly update calls with seller, prepare net sheet for all offers, present all offers to seller, obtain pre-approval letter from buyer's agent, examine and verify buyer's qualifications, examine and verify buyer's lender, negotiate all offers, once under contract, send to title company, check buyer's agent has received copies, change property status in MLS, deliver copies of contract slash addendum to seller, keep track of copies for office file, coordinate inspections with seller, explain buyer's inspection objections to seller, determine seller's inspection resolution, get all repair agreements in writing, refer trustworthy contractors to sellers, meet appraiser at the property, negotiate on any unsatisfactory appraisals, confirm clear to close, coordinate closing times and location, verify title company has all docs, remind sellers to transfer utilities, make sure all parties are notified of closing time, resolve any title issues before closing, receive and carefully review closing docs, confirm closing figures with seller, confirm repairs have been made, resolve any last minute issues, attend seller's closing, pick up sign and lockbox, change status in MLS to sold, close out seller's file with brokerage. Whew, 
that's a lot. So now let's jump into my different viewpoints as far as being a listing agent and what that means. All right, so that was 90 different steps of what it means to be a listing agent and all the different tasks that you might have to encounter. Now, what are some of my different key tips and tricks from my personal experience as a listing agent? That's what I focused on early on in my career is being a listing agent. List to last, especially with ever-changing markets and different dynamics, the agents that can control the market or dominate the market are the ones that can start collecting listings. When you have a lot of listings, you better control your income as a small business professional. Think about it. You have more signs in the yard, buyers are coming to you. You can leverage your time better and you get to control the commission, you get to properly market your property, and you can leverage that opportunity into other opportunities. Maybe you get another listing from that because another seller has seen what a great job you've done. Maybe you attract unrepresented buyers. There's just so much leverage that goes into being a listing agent, and this is why I love it. So what are some of my personal tips and tricks and different add-on points with this list of 90 different things that you probably need to be doing as a listing agent? Number one is, now I get this agent from some of our agents, we have over 290 agents, is they ask me every now and then, hey Zach, what do you think about this list price? Really as the broker, I want to back off of that question. And even as a real estate agent, I really didn't like handling that question for sellers. I think key number one is to know that we advise them, we don't dictate what clients wanna do. This is their home after all. They can list it for whatever price they want to list it for. And when I'm asked as the broker, I've never seen the house, I've never walked through it, I can't possibly know every single neighborhood, every single city, every single state. So this question is kind of a loaded question. What I'd like to refer and what I did as a listing agent is I'm gonna gather everything that has sold as close as possible to that property. If it's the next door neighbor's house, perfect. If it sold in the past two days or three days, perfect. Six months, okay. But I wanna find stuff in that neighborhood as tightly packed as possible with the same number of bedrooms, bathrooms, all these different characteristics. Find the closest comparables you can and present that information to the seller and ask them, looking at these and everything else that you've seen in the market, what do you think, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, is a fair list price? Because that's what we wanna do. We wanna give them all the information and let them make the decision, not us. It's not our job as a real estate agent to tell somebody, your house will sell for this. That's how we can get in trouble. So number one is just realizing our role is to advise, not dictate. Now I wanna harp on Points number 9, 10, and 11. So advise on repairs or upgrades, provide home seller to do checklist, explain current market conditions. So this is what I would start to do to really set myself apart as a real estate agent. Now, NARS home buyer and seller profiles oftentimes show that 70% or more of the time, if you're just the first agent they meet with, they're gonna sign with you. But I wanna do things a little bit different and show that I'm a true class professional. So when I'm meeting with somebody, there's a couple different strategies that I'm utilizing in order to secure that listing. So first thing is first is actually looking at their home, not just telling them every single time, your home is absolutely beautiful, there's nothing wrong with it, I'll list it for $100,000 over, over what the current comps support. No, I wanna be fully transparent with each seller. So if I'm seeing like dings on the walls and they have touch up paint, if I'm seeing light bulbs that are burnt out, if the front yard could use some fresh mulch, so different things like this, I'm giving them constructive feedback in a professional manner. I'm not just, uh, blowing smoke and telling them their home is absolutely perfect because I just have commission breath on me as a real estate agent. I want to truly have dialect and conversation with these homeowners because they can tell when you're being upfront and truthful and they appreciate that level of professionalism. So I will actually make to-do checklists if it's warranted. So I may point out different things. I'm going to bring a piece of paper with me. I'm going to write out different to-do lists for the seller. So that way they could help maximize what their home could sell for because you got to coach them up and tell them that buyers are looking for every reason not to buy that home, every single reason. So if we can start marking off little different objections that could pop up, this doorstop is broken. Again, the bulbs are broken, the blinds are broken, little things like that, even just cleaning your home, it's free. But if we can start doing all this, we remove reasons why a buyer shouldn't write an offer and we make it closer and closer to where they should write an offer. Plain current market conditions. So this really, help set the tone for sellers. So what I like to do is on my comps, when I'm giving them the comps and showing them potential ranges, what other things are selling for, I may write a range on that comp form. Maybe I could say, hey, based on everything I'm seeing here, your home might be able to list between 400 and 450,000, but the actual list price is totally up to you. You could list it way higher, way lower, whatever you wanna do. What do you think is fair? 
but I want them to initial off on that CMA report with that range. So that way they understand I'm setting that expectation because a lot of times I may offer that range 400 to 450 and they want to list at 475. Now I may take that listing, but in the back of their mind, I've set that expectation. I'm also going over how many days on the market that the property uh, on average, this type of condition, this type of price, how long they're on the market for. Because again, as the broker, I do get questions. Hey Zach, it's been five days on the market. My home isn't selling. What do I do? Well, we haven't set proper market expectations with ourselves as a real estate agent and with our client. If we can better prep them ahead of time, hey, homes in this neighborhood on average take about 32 days to sell. So it's only day seven. We might want to give it some more time or maybe you want to look at this or this approach. So set current market expectations, create for them a to-do list and cover any different repair items. Now, what I would do as a real estate agent, and this was me personally, is for any repair items that are really small, really, really small, you want to go big and crazy because you could be out a lot of money. It is a risky approach, but for little items, I usually mentally set aside a budget of about a hundred to two hundred dollars. So if I could pitch in and help with different stuff and take things off their plate or show up for a weekend and really knock out some of these projects for them, that sets me apart as a real estate agent. I can't tell you how many times I've bought 10 bags of mulch, about 30 bucks, covered the front flower beds, and it just gives it a pop of fresh curb appeal. That's $30 out of my pocket. Or I fix all the light bulbs and make them the same tone. So there's little different things that you could do. Now it is a risk because if the home doesn't sell, you might not get that money back. But that is an approach that could help you stand out. One last thing to really help me stand out is I put a zero cancellation fee in my special steps of my listing agreement. So what does this mean? This basically means if the seller at any point wants to fire me, they can do so in writing and it's completely free. I don't charge them a dime. I don't ask for any reimbursements. I don't ask for my photography back. Now, every single real estate agent is different and this is a big risk. I have missed out on a listing before and been out the cost of photography. So this could affect you, but here's what I have found. When I do a 0% cancellation or, or $0 cancellation, here's oftentimes the two types of people that terminate. One, people that weren't really serious to begin with. It means they never even really wanted to sell, they weren't that motivated, and so they canceled. And that was my bad for not properly filtering them a little bit better. The other reason that they might cancel is truly because I'm doing an awful job. So that's that comes down to why I do a zero cancellation fee because I know I'm gonna do an amazing job. I'm not worried about that part. And if they truly terminate, it's just gonna come down to uh, they weren't that motivated to do it. So I like to do it, it helps me get a lot more listings because I just write, hey, at any time you can fire me, it's zero dollars and I just truly want to work with people that want to work with me. Now, a lot of the points on this 90 persons checklist are pretty self-explanatory. Order professional photography, input the listing to the MLS, uh, schedule drone or 3D shoot if you want, get the seller's approval of all marketing materials. So a lot of that's self-explanatory. But I want to kind of start to jump down to when you actually start getting an offer. You have the property listed, you're actively marketing it, you're canvassing the neighborhood, you might be running some ads for this property, and you finally get that contract and everything's accepted. So what do I do as a listing agent? Because it's a lot different than being a buyer's agent. It's a little bit easier. It's more on the buyer to maintain their timelines and deadlines and make sure they're adhering to that. Um, so what I wanna do, the first thing's first, when I have a bound contract, within 24 hours, I wanna get that contract to the title company ASAP. I also wanna make sure the lender has a copy. All parties to this transaction need a copy of this contract immediately, within 24 hours. If they don't have it, they don't know about it. If the contract's bound but stuck in your email and nobody's been notified, nobody's working on it. So this can create some delays with title companies, with lenders, people can get frustrated, all because it stemmed from a lack of communication and a lack of notifying others that, hey, we actually have a deal going on. So make sure you get that contract out within 24 hours to all the parties that may need this contract. The other step I see missed a little bit is changing the listing to under contract or pending in your MLS system. So a lot of MLSs have a 24 hour or 48 hour rule, meaning as soon as it's under contract officially within 24 to 48 hours, you should be changing it to under contract pending in your MLS system. Now, this is going to drop off a lot of showings. There are almost gonna be virtually none. And so some sellers may be concerned like, hey, these people have a home sale contingency. Can I still market the property? You can, but in the MLS, it's still gotta show as pending. You can still tell other people, try to get backup offers, but in the MLS, according to the rules, we still have to change it to pending. So make sure you do that as a real estate agent. So now that we've sent out a copy of the contract to all parties and we've changed the listing to pending in the MLS, what's next? Well, really, 
this is where contract skills come into play and being a master negotiator. So as a real estate agent, representing the seller, remember that's the key word, representing the seller, you need to have their best interest at heart and follow all their lawful instructions. And one of those things, as far as representing your client to the best of your abilities, is to know that contract inside and out. Is the buyer maintaining all their deadlines and sticking within them? Have they defaulted in any way? So have they made their earnest money deposit? Have they scheduled their inspection? Is the lender working on the file? Is the appraisal been ordered? Do they have homeowner's insurance? These are all different nuances within each contract that you need to be aware of. And if the buyer doesn't hit that or is approaching a deadline, consult with your seller to see what they would like to do. Would they like to push the issue? Would they like to send reminders? Or do they want this period to come and go and it lapse and maybe the seller wants to back out of the deal? So coordinate with your client, make sure they're aware of their own deadlines that the buyer should be maintaining and both of you can coordinate, all right, They've missed the earnest money deposit, uh, but they also haven't done this. We don't like how they're operating here. Now they're in default. Let's send proper notice and get out of this deal. So that's very important. Mark all these deadlines in your calendar. This is what I do every single deal that I have. I'm marking everything on my Google calendar. I know exactly when things are expiring. Now as we're maintaining these different deadlines, every single deal presents different challenges. Even me overseeing over 1500 transactions, Every single deal is new and something else pops up. So know this as a real estate agent getting into the deal. As a listing agent, if it's too good to be true, if you've had no issues, be prepared day of closing, something's about to pop up. So same thing, you've coached your seller. They know all the deadlines. Let's say inspection period is coming to an end and you get hit with a massive repair list. What do you do? You don't freak out. You don't take it out on the buyer's agent and you don't negotiate directly with the buyer's agent without first consulting with your seller. So you would say, hey, Hey, buyer's agent, thank you for this repair list. I'm gonna to talk to my client and get back to you. And that's how you handle it like a professional. Don't get emotional with this process. It's business, it's real estate, it's not an attack against you. No home is perfect. Every single inspector will find something, but it's up to you and the seller to figure out, do you want to uh, agree to any of these repairs? Do you want to decline? Do you instead want to offer concessions? Maybe the seller moved away and they're living in a completely different state and they don't have time to find a plumber, find an electrician and deal with that from out of state. So work with your seller to figure out the best solutions and then coordinate that back to the buyer's agent and see if the deal can be made. But again, almost every single step should be coordinated with your client first. Make sure to consult them and know what they want to do. It's not your property, it's not your decision, get with the seller. Now we're assuming we've gotten through the inspection period as a listing agent, we're on to the appraisal. Now I have an entire video that covers what do you do if an appraisal comes in low. Again, you have to become a master negotiator and figure out creative solutions that are a win-win, but that's an entirely separate video is how to handle a low appraisal. Let's say we get through that. We're approaching a final walkthrough. So as a listing agent, every single buyer that is buying a house, I want a final inspection walkthrough form signed. This is because this will protect my seller. This form normally has some sort of verbiage, no matter what state you're in, that says the buyer has conducted a final walkthrough and confirms the condition of the property is in the same or better condition than when they first went under contract. And they accept the condition of the property as is. That's in a final inspection walkthrough form. If you get this form signed, you can sleep at night with your head on your pillow way easier. Always get this form signed. And if the buyer's agent is avoiding or dodging or saying, well, it's really tough for my buyers to sign or they've been very busy, but they'll, they'll sign tomorrow, everything's all good. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call the buyer's title company or closing attorney, and I'm gonna send this final inspection form to them. And I'm gonna say, hey, when they're going through all their closing documents, can you throw in this form for them to review and sign if acceptable? That way, again, I'm fully protecting my seller. These buyers have signed off on a final inspection walkthrough form. They're good with the property. Don't call me afterwards because it never fails. A week after closing, the fridge ice maker goes out and you're getting a call. Um, six months after they close on the home and the HVAC goes out. A lot of these things are just homeowners maintenance items. This is part of owning a home, but some buyers don't understand that. So get this form signed. Now, and some of the final steps as a listing agent, besides what these 90 steps have taught us, is review the final Ulta. So with your client, every single title company or closing attorney should send you a preliminary Ulta. This is basically a rundown of what the seller is gonna make with every single line item of expenses, estimated taxes, commissions, mortgage payoff, HOA stuff. Review this with your seller. Does every single line match up what you have as far as a real estate agent? 
Does your commission match? Does your brokerage charge a transaction fee or admin fee? Is that correct? Are all the payoffs properly there? Is there some sort of second mortgage that nobody knows about and you're going to tell us the day before closing? So review this Alta and make sure everything is on it. That is your job as a real estate agent to double check that. Yes, the seller is going to sign it at closing, but you might as well get that a few days before closing, two to three days before closing, prep your seller, and now they know what they're going to make and walk away with a check at closing for. That way there's no surprises. One of my very first closings, I did. Uh, we had the preliminary Alta go out. They didn't check their email. And when they showed up to the closing table, they forgot that commissions were involved. So they walked away with a net that was a lot less than they thought. And I felt truly embarrassed. Like I thought like we signed the listing agreement. I shared how much commission there was. They just didn't think about it. So I felt totally awful. And so from here on out, I've always made sure every single seller reviews that preliminary Alta with me. And we go through it line by line to make sure everything makes sense to them and all the numbers match up. Finally, outside of these 90 steps, the last couple that I want to add is one, change the property to sold on the MLS. Again, most MLSs would like this within 48 hours. So make sure you remember to change the property to sold on the MLS and input all the correct information. Some MLS systems ask, are there any seller contributions? Who's the uh, selling agent, meaning the buyer's agent? So make sure you put in all that information and give the proper agent credit. And as a big note from me as a broker, when everybody has closed and signed and agents get paid, Sometimes they forget just the Alta that was signed at closing by both the sellers and buyers, upload it to your compliance file for the brokerage, makes their lives a lot easier. We can verify that it's officially closed out. And that is what it means to be a listing agent, step one through 90, and utilize this as a value proposition. You could create some sort of marketing campaign to say, view my 90 step approach to listing any home or my 90 steps to sell any property. You can make a lot of different informational guides, PDFs, you could run different ads behind this. So make this your own, make it a value proposition and go crush it as a real estate agent. If you found this information helpful, subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out.